Good morning and happy Sunday. Welcome to a beautiful summer's day here in England. Our last video was very, very rainy, so it is nice to be out here in the sun. This week on Hoof Talk, we're answering some of your questions left on cow number 5883. The cow who had a serious hoof infection. Her hoof was in a bad shape before her first trim, but she's come a long way since then and we're really pleased with her progress. Let's get into this video and see what you guys had to say. How does an infection like this happen? I'm gonna give you two very obvious things right here. Obvious things number one, stones. Obvious things number two, you see this concrete here? Lovely concrete. A lot of my farmyards, concrete are just like this. Look at this groove, look at this lip. So you get little things like that. And as these cows are standing, they're hitting these marks, they're knocking them. They could be stepping on stones, getting their impact. We could, like we had last year, have a very wet, wet, wet year. Gives poor quality silage. Poor quality silage, just like if you ever notice, depending on what you guys eat, your fingernails may grow longer. Cows are the same. And a poor diet, potentially a management change, can all increase levels of lameness. So how does an infection like that happen? Nine times out of 10, it's environmental. A sole ulcer, that's lack of routine trimming. Lack of routine trimming, too much sandy on concrete. If they were out in a nice pasture, just like we're looking at here, what you'll see is stones in the feet. That has an impact, but too much sanding on concrete has a potential to increase your sole ulcers. Simple, your white lines, they're turning as I've shown you in other videos. And just like here, just like that concrete, little lips, all of it can cause lameness. So it's all pretty simple. Management is the key to healthy, happy cows. And we are very fortunate that 99% of my farms are managed incredibly well. I'm looking at one right here. Cows out there in the field, grazing are out at pasture nearly all the year. We still see feet issues. So when people are like, oh, it's because they're kept indoors. It's not. Management is key to everything. So lameness issues can be managed out to a degree, but it can also be breeding. There is trials being done for breeding for all sorts, but that's by the by. Simple, management is key to lameness. So these videos are satisfying to watch. They are satisfying to make, and there is nothing I enjoy more than seeing a perfect routine trim. I absolutely love my job, and I wouldn't be doing this anywhere near as much as I am without the support of you guys watching across all our channels. So it has enabled me to do more with my job. It's enabled me to learn a lot more. So I've been to conferences all over the place to upskill as much as possible. So we're able to implement our invoice balance method. We're able to do all of that to make our skills as good as we can possibly be. So yeah, it is very satisfying doing a routine trim and it is very satisfying seeing a girl that's struggling walk out so much better than she walked in so thank you for the comment and yeah our job is one of the most satisfying jobs out there i think surprisingly enough this is a comment we get regular is the wrong word but it's an observation that gets made and there is a few reasons for that so one of the big reasons and it is a big reason why we've changed. And if you look at almost anyone else that trims on social media, they use what is called a rotor clip. This is similar to a rotor clip. This is a new trial disc. It's round, it's very smooth, and there is no bite in the disc at all. 
Now, most of my videos are filmed on a Duratrim. Now, this disc, this grinder needs a wash, but this disc is a little bit more aggressive. It is not as smooth and it is brilliant for long feet. Now, they do not leave as nice and as smooth a marks as you'll get from a rotor clip round or the new, I don't even know what Ben calls his disc. I don't, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, all that new disc, they're very similar. So when you see a lot of the guys that trim, Nate, Aaron, Graham, they're all trimming on rotor clips and rotor clips, trim taps, they are just a little bit smoother than these Dura trims. They are quite aggressive and it is a big reason why we've changed because we want to give you guys as satisfying a trims as we can get. I get that comment regular enough to know that changing my discs was very much needed. But yeah, it's an observation that we do get a lot and I can understand where it comes from. But I assure you guys, we try and do as good a job for these cows and we are not lameness trimmers. We are routine check cow trimmers. I don't see many lame cows. We don't specialize in trimming lame cows. All I care about is routine feet. I want to see as many routine days as possible. And to put it in perspective, when we had trim for some of our big farms, when we could be hard trimming for dry off and put 500 cows for on one farm, we have some farms where we won't treat a single cow. Now, there isn't many trimmers in the country that would have results quite like that. So we had three dry off trims of over a thousand cows this year that across those thousand cows, we didn't treat a single one. So that is pretty impressive. And that is what we're aiming for. So we're all about the routine trimming, but I understand where the comment comes from. This comment is about conditions of the floor. I know farmers are busy, but surely they can keep an area clean. Now, the one thing you've got to remember, we have this race here. Now this race is up to, well, up to four. There's one gate not on here, sections long. So it will take up to four cows. So that is back further than my crush back here. And as you can imagine, if we're running 40 cows through, if we're running 60 cows through, if we're running 300 cows through, just how much poop, etc., these cows are gonna give. Now, they're eating tens of kilos of food a day. They're drinking in excess of 100 liters to produce milk. They're drinking a lot, they're eating a lot, they're going to poop. That's the reality of our job. Now, we could, run around after them and carry a little bucket behind. That's not the reality of farming. The reality is we scrape the cows out minimum of twice a day, some farms three, some farms automatic every two hours, some farms robots going around, hoovering up, stuff like that. But it can't be done everywhere while we're trimming. So you'll see cows leave, it could be dirty. That's the reality of running 50 cat plus cows through a particular area at one time. So farmers being busy doesn't really come into it. All farmers need to keep cows clean. All farmers need the manure to spread on their fields. You look behind me here at all this countryside, it's farmers that are spreading the muck on the land to keep that grass growing, to grow your veg, to grow everything. So we need the poop. <laughs> so the reality is it's kept as clean as cows need it to be. Could some places be cleaner? Of course they could, but this time of year, as you'll see, looking off in the distance here, you can see plenty of cows, plenty of sheep. <sighs> yeah, we keep it as clean as possible in the situations that we are in, but yeah. It's a good question, and I do get asked that question a lot. Now, thank you guys for watching episode five of Hoof Talk. Drop your comments. Let us know your comments. Smash that subscribe, and we will see you guys next week for next week's video. We'll catch you then.